So today's topic um, is, is one that many patients complain about, uh, that I certainly hear quite a bit about it from the people who come to see me. Um, it's on coping with chemo brain. And many people find after their cancer treatment that their thinking has changed quite a bit. Um, a little foggier, a little harder to concentrate. So I want to go through what chemo brain is exactly and what's permanent, what's not permanent, uh, what we know about some of the cognitive changes after cancer treatment, and what you can do about them. So generally, when we talk about chemo brain, it, it kind of makes it sound like it's just the chemotherapy causing the changes. And we certainly know that's um, the case now, that there's growing evidence to say that after cancer treatment, um, there are some, some pretty consistent changes in thinking associated with uh, certain types of chemotherapy. But chemo isn't the only thing that causes um, cognitive changes. And we're going to go through some of that today. But when we talk about chemo brain, what we're really talking about is any kind of memory, um, attention, um, thinking change that happens after any part of your cancer treatment. It can be due directly to your cancer treatment, uh, more obvious if you have something like brain cancer, um, or it can be related to the side effects of treatment like menopause. So it's a wide variety of, of things that can lead to any sort of change in your thinking. So let's go through first the symptoms of chemo brain. What are some of the more common things that do change as a result of cancer treatment? One of the more, more frequent complaints is that uh, people find after their cancer treatment they just can't multitask anymore. Before your treatment, you may have been able to talk on the phone while driving and writing a to-do list and, and doing multiple things at the same time. And generally, it's a good rule not to multitask. Whenever we divide our attention um, in two different ways, our performance suffers. We don't. We tend to not do as well on either task when we try and do more than one. But after cancer treatment, people find that they just can't do it anymore. And they think, well, if I try harder or maybe if I get more sleep or they try and put more force into the problem. And the fact of the matter is that it's not just a matter of force or you being tired. There have been some changes that may have, may have made it more difficult for you to, to do this sort of um, multiple tasks at the same time. Most people also complain about being sort of in a mental fog. Things don't seem as clear. Um, you feel a little disjointed from uh, people around you. Your attention isn't focused and crisp. And everything seems sort of foggy. You have just difficulty paying attention. Another common change is difficulty with new learning. So. Anytime you try and learn a new task or memorize a list or do something that you um, haven't over rehearsed, um, you're going to have difficulty with that new kind of learning or it's going to take you much longer. That's another frequent complaint. And of course, word finding difficulties. So this is kind of a mild memory lapse, which can be somewhat embarrassing, particularly if the word you're looking for is somebody's name. Even people you may have known for years, suddenly you find it's on the tip of your tongue, you can't find their name, or you can't find the right word to express what it is that you're feeling or what it is that you want. You tend to stumble on your words, which can be a bit of a problem if you had a job where you talked a lot, uh, like in sales, where you have to remember customers' names and product details. And, and so depending on what it is that you, you do in your day-to-day -day life, word-finding difficulties can cause quite a bit of impairment. Um, other people find ways to work around this, to sort of fake their way through the day. But depending on what you do, the word finding difficulties can be quite a disability, even though it seems mild. Another common change is processing speed. What, what do we mean by this term? It's a term that psychologists use to describe how quickly you're able to do something, not necessarily how well you're able to do something. So people who can type quickly have fast processing speed. Um, and people who can work quickly and accurately, there's many tasks where that's, that's important. Um, certainly if you're a mechanic, you want to work somewhat quickly. Um, or if you're, if you're a nurse and need to um, set up IVs and set up different uh, 
pieces of equipment or if you're anything that requires any kind of fine motor skill. Uh, generally, motor skills are mostly affected by processing speed difficulties. So you may still be able to do the task, uh, but more slowly after your cancer treatment. Processing speed can also be difficult because your reading speed may, uh, may slow down as a result of this. So if you were a student, if you're going to university, you may need more time to write tests. Uh, that's one accommodation that can be made. Many people don't realize that when you go to university, for example, uh, most Canadian universities have a disability resource center and you can go to this resource center and they will help you with accommodations. So you don't have to talk to each and every single professor about what it is that you need to be successful in university. So what they will do is they'll contact your professor and have them uh, send them a copy of the exam and then they can give you a quiet room uh, and extra time to write your tests as a result of uh, a documented disability such as a processing speed deficit. So those are good things to know um, because sometimes it's a very simple accommodation that can lead you to be successful. If you had difficulty with processing speed but still, you know, were smart enough to go to school, um, you'd need that, just that little bit of extra time, you know, might mean the difference between an A and a C in a course. A lot of people find after their chemotherapy that they find they're quite disorganized. They have a harder time staying on top of the details of their day-to-day -day life, remembering uh, what to do each day, and may need to write things down, or you go to the store and you find you just can't get through the grocery store in a, in a quick manner like you used to be able to, that you're going here and there and everywhere. So this is, adds a lot of time to the day and a lot of stress if you have difficulty with organization. Also, people find that their short-term memory suffers, that they have difficulty, say, holding a telephone number in their memory or, or other um, short things, that you do need to write things down. Attention span is another thing that can suffer so that you find that you have more difficulty sustaining your attention or holding your attention on something long for a, for a period of time. Particularly true if it's something boring, something that you're not really enjoying, then uh, it's harder to, to keep that attention, attention going. Fatigue is another problem. If you're struggling with disorganization and new learning and these things are harder to do, they take a toll in your energy level. So I'm not talking about the kind of fatigue that you experience when you have cancer, which can lead to memory problems, but also the memory problems can lead to fatigue uh, because you're working so hard uh, to just stay on top of your life. And concentration suffers. So most people who say could sit down and read a book or concentrate on a problem for a long period of time just can't sustain that mental effort after cancer treatment. Now that's pretty grim. There is some good news. Um, some of the things that aren't affected um, by post-chemotherapy um, treatment is, or treatment is um, your general intellect. Most people don't lose IQ points uh, as a result of their cancer treatment. Uh, personality tends to be very stable. I mean, your personality may change as a result of going through, um, well, a life-changing event. Uh, but generally speaking, who you are and what you know stays intact. It's the difficulty with organization and short-term memory. Long-term memories generally stay intact. So you are who you are after cancer treatment, but you're going to need some strategies to help you um, stay on top of things in your in your day-to-day -day life if you have trouble with, with uh, your thinking and memory after cancer treatment. So let's go through some of the causes because as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, it's not just chemotherapy that causes these. Certainly chemo is the one that's most associated with this, but you can expand this to anything that's involved in your cancer treatment. So it can be the radiation, particularly if you have radiation to the head, uh, and or if you have hormonal treatment as, a, as um, part of your cancer treatment. That may also affect your ability to think. So basically any of the, uh, the treatments that are used for cancer, there's probably 